When I was 17, I was faced with the biggest decision of my life. What did I want to do for, well, the rest of my life? Never mind, I was probably only in the first quarter of my life, still didn't know how to drive, still had to ask my parents for permission to go to the movies, hadn't done this, hadn't done that, and yet, this was the moment that I sealed my fate forever. Or so it seems. For anyone who's applying to universities, it's just so daunting the weight that one decision bears. What if you make a mistake? What if you're not sure what you want to do? So basically when I was in year 12, I wasn't really sure what I wanted to study. So it was kind of like I wanted to do marketing, I wanted to do a bit of like something artsy, like design or something. And then when it came to my enter school, I accidentally got high enough to do law. So that's kind of where law came in. So I was like, okay, I'll do a commerce and a law double degree. And then if I don't like law, then I can drop it. Keeping her options open by choosing law and commerce shows us how so many of us are uncertain of our career choice when we're choosing our university preferences. According to Future Leaders Index, only 29% of young adults were sure about their career path. Perhaps this is because of the external pressures that are set upon us that would get us to consider career choices that we otherwise wouldn't have. For Connie, her parents also played a big role. They really wanted me to study medicine or law. Um, medicine wasn't happening because like, if I see blood, I'm gonna say. <laughs> So I think that kind of influenced me to pick up law. Like Connie, Estelle also considered law. It sounds bad, but I think just because it sounds like a prestigious kind of career, other people were talking about studying it. It had like a really high score that you need to get into it. So I thought it'd be a good thing to get into. But deep down, I probably didn't really have that interest in law. It was more just like, it sounded good. While it might sound bad, it's true. Many of us fall into the prestige career trap. I know even for myself, and I've spoken about this many times on my channel, that I chose the pharmacy profession because I saw it as something that was a well-respected profession and something that was high paying. Here's Josh. He shares with us how this type of attitude will only stretch our happiness so far. For me, when I was at university, like, my expectation was go to a degree that means I can get a job in the future. And so when I got there, I was like, sweet, I can do that. Like, this is easy. Um, and then I went up probably like the hierarchy of needs to go, okay, well, now that I have like some security in my life, what else is there? Um, and yeah, the answer was very obviously not financial. I'm a big believer that if your expectation of what you need to be happy in life is different from the reality of your life, if there's a delta there, if you view that delta as a goal and something to be like, like a challenge that you want to take on willingly, that's a positive. But if you think I need this much money to be happy and I'm only earning this much, you'd be miserable. It makes sense why we have such a hard time deciding our university choice with all these different factors playing at our ear. While it can be easy to look at the external pressures set upon us, I think there's a deeper reason for the difficulty. This is nowhere better summed up than in Michelle Obama's Becoming. It's one of the most useless questions an adult can ask a child. What do you want to be when you grow up? as if growing up is finite, as if at some point you become something and that's the end. See, that's the issue. We're always being asked, what do you want to be when you grow up? But growing up is a lifelong journey in itself. You're always growing, always learning, always discovering more about the world, which will in turn change your perspective on you, your life and what you want to do. And that's the conflict with writing down a university first preference. There's this sense of concreteness, as though what you choose will determine your life pathway indefinitely. So far in my life, I've been a lawyer, I've been a vice president at a hospital and the director of a nonprofit that helps young people build meaningful careers. And until recently, I was the first lady of the United States of America. A job that's not officially a job, but that nonetheless has given me a platform like nothing I could have imagined. Hi! According to Foundation for Young Australians, 15-year-olds will likely navigate 17 different jobs across five different careers in their lifetime. Finding out that your first career choice might not be the one you stick with in five or 10 years can be a bit frightening. So what advice did Josh have to get us at least one step closer to the career choice that we would be more likely to stick to? I would encourage them to taste before picking a degree, something that's really practical. If you're going to be an ex, if you're going to be a lawyer, a doctor, an engineer, an anthropologist, a sociologist, a biochemical scientist, 
go and speak to five people who are actually in that job. Save yourself five years, yeah. figure out what they actually do in their day-to-day -day life and if they like it. And if you go and speak to five people and all of them are like, I hate my job, I work 90 hours a week, I don't like the environment, like maybe that's not a good career path. Yeah. You know, first, if you go and speak to people and they're really excited and they love their work and you can attach to that, you might just score a mentor in the process. Mm. You also get a bit of a sense of what's out there. So if you're unsure about your career choice, it's okay. Careers are a journey, and as you get older, your interests will naturally change, and what you once found fulfilling might not just give you that same spark anymore. You never reach a pinnacle when you finally say, I've grown up now, and this is me forever. At the end of the day, it seems that that lifelong decision doesn't have to be so concrete at all. None of these people regret their initial career decisions, and all are in a career they currently love. Whether they'll be there in 10 years time, we'll have to see. I wanted to thank you for watching if you're all the way at the end of this video. As you can tell, I'm trying something different on my channel. I think that recently I've really thought deeply about you know, what is meaningful to me in my career and what I do and the value that I give to the world and doing videos like this that are more topic based that are relevant to millennials like yourself and I I think is something that I really want to work towards on this YouTube channel so you're going to see some changes coming up now and in the near future and especially if you're in year 12 moving on into university I'm gonna change up this YouTube channel a bit so that it stays relevant for you and we're not so English focused if you have anything constructive to say about this video then leave it in the comments and I'll see you guys next time bye